Um, welcome back to my lecture, uh, Jitko Mut's lecture. Today I'm going to uh, talk about support vector machine. So this is a very powerful tool in uh, machine learning when you work with a classification problem. So um, you have uh, data points. Uh -huh. uh, you work with the binary classification problem. Okay, you have data points in two classes and you want to find um, a classifier that would separate these two data sets into, um, into two classes. Okay. So there are, of course, there are many tutorials out there that explain on SVM. What we're going to do here is uh, to go back to the basic, the fundamental um, principle of SVM, which is a mathematical formulation as an optimization. So uh, in the first uh, video clip here, we're going to uh, give the uh, principle of uh, finding a separate separating hyperplane. And to talk about the, uh, the basic of uh, hard and soft margin classifier, the SVC. And in the next video clip, uh, how to find, how to estimate the parameter of those uh, classifiers, we go, we're going to use the duality theory, which means we're going to uh, explain the dual problem of SVM and uh, give you the KKT or the optimality conditions. And how to extend uh, or give the nonlinearity uh, to the to the classifier, and that's uh, what we call SVM. In the last video clip, okay, uh, we uh, I think we present some uh, some uh, list selective uh, examples of how to extend the SVM, and we talk a little bit about the algorithm. And last, uh, how can you use the support vector machine in a regression problem? Uh, that is our uh, this that is what we call SVR. Okay, so the setting is is um is is the following. We have data point right <clears throat> as I said before. We have data point as supposed to be from two classes, and you want to find a classifier. Okay, some function either linear or nonlinear that basically give you a rule so that we can decide the outcome uh, of uh, determining whether d uh, some data point that is given should be on class 1 or class 2, class 1 or class 2. In order to do all of that, first of all, I would like to introduce the concept of separating hyperplane. We're going to sa start with a classifier that has linear property. And that, uh, uh, that's why we uh, should understand uh, a little bit about uh, linear function. Now we work with Rn. Suppose your x of your variable is a vector in Rn, and then uh, you have a scalar value function f that is linear. A linear function has a form of w transpose x or an inner product between a given vector, a given vector w with your variable x which is basically the sum of uh, w i x i okay so when we uh, when when we when we take a look at the contour of this function which means we find the set of x that uh, this function is is some number okay that contour is going to be a hyperplane right a hyperplane and uh, that hyperplane okay the the angle the way it uh, the, the way that it lies on the space is going to be controlled or, mani or manipulated by the normal vector, W. Okay. That W is also give you the sense of the gradient of this function. If you take the gradient of F, all right, you see that uh, the gradient is basically W, the slope. Okay. When you add some number, uh, some non-zero number B to the linear function, that function is now called an affine function. Here, okay, once we understand the concept of linear function, here's a common, uh, common concept that we're going to uh, uh, encounter every time. Suppose you have a hyperplane uh, lying in the space, okay, and you have some data points in the space. You want to find a linear hyperplane that separates data into two classes, okay. So when you have a hyperplane lying this way, and you have some point here in the space, okay, maybe I should, um, all right, 
Okay, suppose this is a hyperplane, all right? And you have some points lying in the space. A lot of time we are interested in the distance of that point to the hyperplane. Okay, whether it lies above or above or under the hyperplane. So the distance or what we uh, hear a lot often, the term margin, okay? The distance between, uh, a distance from the point Z, from a point Z to a hyperplane, how can we characterize this distance? Does it depend on W and B? Yes, this is a very trivial uh, mathematical problem, okay? I give you the solution first, but uh, we would like you to uh, do this exercise. So well, you have the point Z. The distance is given by this, um, uh, this, this value, okay? Okay, let's, uh, let's sketch. So we're gonna encounter the, the results of, of this thing uh, very often. That's why I go over the detail a little bit, all right? Um, if, um, so uh, from, 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 this, uh, from this explanation, distance from a point in Rn to a hyperplane. But if we go back to the, go back to R2, this is go back to the R2. The hyperplane is simply the straight line, right? And this is um, all the points in the brown line has to satisfy W transpose X plus B is zero. You have a point Z in, 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 in the space R2. So of course the distance from Z to hyperplane is given by the green line, right? Um, let, let's mark the point Y that is the intercept of, of this, um, this grid line to the hyperplane. You know that the distance is basically the norm of z minus y. And what, what is the characteristic of, of uh, vector y? The point here, the green line has to be perpendicular to the brown line. Okay, so the sketch, the sketch, in order to show that the, the distance is this, okay. We know that if you draw a vector of z minus y, right? The vector z minus y. It has to be parallel to the normal vector w. So when a vector is parallel to the normal vector w, you can say that, oh, it's some scalar, some multiple factor times w um, normalized by its norm because the, um, so this thing has a unit norm, okay? And the distance, basically the distance is just, it's just what? It's just that's a scalar factor alpha that you need to find, okay? How do we, do, how, to, how do we find this alpha? Just, uh, just, uh, just take a note that if I uh, transpose the whole thing, if I transpose the whole thing, Okay, on the both sides, transpose, uh, I take inner product with W. But then on the left hand side, I got to this equation. W transpose Z minus W transpose Y. And then what is the value of W transpose Y? The point Y is a point that lies on the hyperplane. So W transpose Y plus B must, must be uh, zero. So you just plug it in, you just plug it in, and on the left-hand side will be um, the, mm -hmm, W transpose Z plus B equals alpha. On the right-hand side, on the right-hand side, that's going to give you the norm of W because the inner product is just the norm squared. Okay. And that's uh that's it, right? You get the the value of alpha, the the magnitude of alpha. So that's a that's a <coughs> that's a solution. Okay. So once we get this uh, simple fact, it's very useful. Okay, because if we find a point, um, we find a distance from a point to a hyperplane. What about the distance between two hyperplanes? I hope that it's not hard anymore. Once we know this fact, uh, can you show? Uh, can you show that um, given given this result? Okay, therefore the the distance between two parallel hyperplane. 
these two hyperplanes, uh, they have the same normal vector. They only differ by the translation term. This one is uh, B1, this one is B2. So the distance will be proportional to the difference of the translation terms, B1 minus B2. Okay, and also depends on the norm of the normal vector. Okay, so this is uh, uh, two results that are fundamental. Okay, now. Uh, this is what we call maybe in short in short uh, the method that you you should uh, you should take is that um, the margin if I if I uh, if I uh, <coughs> call this uh, width of the tube all right this tube is that if I call it as a margin uh, we see that the margin is uh, uh, inversely uh, proportional to uh, the norm of a the norm of the normal vector of the hyperplane. Okay, which means if the norm is large, the margin is small. That's it. Okay. Now that's the concept of a linear function. Uh, now let's take a look at the concept of the half spaces. Basically, the half spaces uh, are the uh, subspaces of Rn when you use the linear hyperplane to to split it. Okay, so this is the uh, parametric equation of the linear hyperplane. If you switch to have a uh, linear inequality less than zero or greater than zero, you get the corresponding two half spaces. Okay, so all the all the values of x that correspond to the green points when you evaluate this quantity is going to be greater than zero and vice versa okay now the first question related to uh, classification problem is that if I have data points uh, corresponding to two classes like green and the oranges uh, orange points in this uh, in this graph can you find me a linear hyperplane that can split all those data points perfectly we can post this as the um, as a problem that okay just just find just find w and b that uh, these two inequalities are satisfied we have some some uh, special notes that when when we find w and b such that these inequalities is satisfied this linear inequality is homogeneous in w and b which means if you can find one solution of W and B, I can also multiply the whole thing by the factor of, of two or any other scalar value, and the inequality still holds, right? Which means my two W my two W and my two B is also another solution, another another parameter of uh, of the hyperplane. So you basically have so many solution, infinitely many solution, if you pose the problem in this way. So that's why we have some common way to restrict some solutions. You can just add a number, uh, a constant m, on the on the right hand side of inequality, so that uh, this uh, linear inequality is no longer homogeneous in W and B. Okay. So in the context of our problem, that constant number that we would like to restrict the solution m, uh, the, uh, to restrict the solution, that number m, we choose it to be 1. Okay, to be 1. Here's the thing, okay. Um, now we're going to pose the problem in this way. Um, suppose we have a w, sorry, x and y are data points. You are your point, here's our x. But uh, data points that lie in one class will be labeled with a uh, y uh, that has two outcomes, either either one or minus one. Now in SVM we use this label instead of zero and one, as uh, uh, like we did in logic strict regression. So, so we it, it will be clear shortly why we pick these labels. Okay, <coughs> okay, so. When we add, uh, so suppose um, we add the constant m, which is one in this uh, in this uh, in this example, 
So everything that uh, greater than one will be in these uh, green half spaces, right? And if we just add the constant minus one here, okay, everything that is less than minus one, I mean, what, what, what I mean is that x transpose w plus b less than minus one will lie below this hyperplane. All right, and the equation of uh, the guy in the middle, the hyperplane, is 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 this. All right. Okay. Now, from the results we had earlier, these are the two parallel hyperplane. The distance is of course uh, two, right? Uh, one minus uh, minus one, which is two, is uh, proportional to the inverse of the norm w. We label um, we label with y i equals one. We label with y i equals minus one. Okay. So the the problem uh, the question we would like to uh, answer is that is there any hyperplane? Which means is there any set of value w and b so that so that the first inequality satisfy with the label one. And the second set of inequality is satisfied with the label minus one. It has to hold for all i. I iterate from one to n, big n, the number or data points. So we basically have two sets of uh, these inequalities. So we have totally two n linear inequalities. Now, um, uh, so. Um, when we label with y equals 1 and minus 1, we see that we can combine these two sets of linear inequalities in just one single set by uh, considering the product of yi and uh, xi transpose w plus b. Okay, so uh, you, you can just examine when y is 1 and when this guy is greater than 1, right? It's, it's positive, right? So the product is still uh, greater than 1. And of course, um, when what? When yi, uh, when yi is negative 1, right? And this guy is less than minus 1, which is, which is what? Which is um, negative, right? The, everything will be greater than 1. So this is kind of um, uh, the way, uh, and also the reason why we pick the label one and minus one in, in, in this SVM, okay? This is a feasibility problem, okay? We just wanna find W and B so that these, uh, two N, uh, these uh, N equalities hold. It is linear inequality in W and B because y and xi are data points, you evaluate it. So these are problem parameters, not the variable. I mean, in the sense of feasibility problem. Okay. Um, uh, okay, I think I have some pictures to show here. When you consider such feasibility problem, you see that um, there are many solutions of uh, feasibilities. As, I, as we illustrated here, we, we want to split the blue points from the red points. You can find many lines, right? Many uh, linear hyperplane. Uh, different colors have different normal vectors, different slopes, and also different translation term, the bias term. So that's why this topic, we will talk about uh, a linear classifier that has some optimal sense. Okay, so th there are two, uh, two corresponding problems, hard and soft margin classifier. Um, because as, um, that's why the concept of optimization comes in, okay? When we find um, many feasibility feasibility problem, how can we just map some objective so that we know that uh, our solution is optimal in some sense. As we know before from the result that um, when we have a uh, one classifier, uh, sorry, one hyperplane, right? And these are just uh, any two parallel hyperplanes, the tube, the margin or the width of this tube is, uh, um, proportional to the inverse of the norm of the normal vector. So if we enlarge the tube, if we try to maximize the margin, 
it would be um, it it would kind of increase the robustness of your classifier because it seems like you can just stretch out these two data points, you know, as large as possible. So this is the first concept, the hard margin classifier. I would like to find a linear classifier that has the maximized margin. Since the margin um, uh, has a relationship with the, with, uh, with the norm of the normal vector in this way, if I want the margin to be large, I need to, to have the norm of W as small as possible, right? But the two norm, uh, because the two norm is, is, uh, is non-negative, right? If I want this guy to be small, I can also say, I will make the square of the norm W as small as possible because the square function is uh, increasing function. Okay. You prefer the quadratic function uh, as opposed to the norm because uh, the square function here is differentiable. This function is non-differentiable. So uh, when you pose it as an optimization problem, it uh, has a lot more involved. Okay, so that's why the hard margin classifier is posted in this way. I wanna, <coughs> I wanna minimize the two norm squared of W because I want the margin to be maximized, and at the same time, all of W's and B, the parameter of my linear classifier, has to separate the data points. So these are called constraints. These, this is called objective. Okay. Um, so this problem uh, only makes sense if the data from the two classes are separated perfectly, which means, which basically means, um, uh, uh, the feasible set or the, this condition has to hold for all i. Okay. Um, what are the variables? Uh, double, the, the, the Variables are W and B. X and Y are data points, so they are problem parameters. When we take a look at this uh, mathematical problem, uh, W and B are variables. When we look, take a look at the constraint, these are just some some number, right? Some fixed value. So you can see that oh, this is just some vector transpose beta plus plus what? Some number times b. So this is linear inequality in w and b. We have linear inequality constraints in w and b. If you take a look at the co cost objective, objective function, um, the norm function is uh, basically uh, inner product between w and, and w, right? This is quadratic function in w. So these fit to the framework of quadratic programming. A, quant uh, a quadratic programming is a problem where you minimize the uh, quadratic, uh, quadratic objective with, with linear inequalities or linear equalities. This is called QP. This is QP that has convex uh, property because your quadratic function is, um, uh, your quadratic function has a coefficient here that is, uh, uh, positive semi-definite matrix, which is, uh, in this case, is identity matrix. Okay. Uh, um, so, uh, basically, the hard margin classifier is just a convex quadratic program. You can use QP solver to solve it, and uh, you find the optimal W and B. That, that W and B will give you the largest margin, uh, and it can uh, separate uh, the data points perfectly. Okay. Um, we're gonna see later that for the points, for all the points after you solve it, all right, after you get uh, W hat, your B hat, that specify this linear classifier, the data point that lie exactly on the, on, on the, uh, on the margin, on the, the, on the edge, all right? will play a, such an important role in, in order to calculate W and B. These will be called support vectors, and uh, the definition will be clear later in, in the subsequent video. Okay. Um, 
when we solve the hard margin classifier, uh, there's some problem that we can see that it is very sensitive to individual observation. If you take a look at these two, uh, at these two graphs, uh, these two, these two, <laughs> these two figures only differ by one data point. I'm not sure if you see the difference. Okay. Okay. On the right graph, on the right figure, there is additional blue data point that belong to the blue cl blue class. Okay. So. You see that uh, from the first figure, it, it, it makes sense, right? That, that these two classes can be separable. And the green, uh, the, the black line is the optimal linear classifier. But when we add, when we just one, just one data point added to your data set. Now, you see that uh, the optimal solution now has a very different characteristic from the first one, the slope the normal vector change from this direction to this direction. All right. <clears throat> so, um, so that brings a question that is um, the optimal sense of having the largest margin is does it make sense? Is it useful? Okay. So we want to introduce another concept that try to alleviate uh, this uh, sensitivity to observations, all right? Because we want we want our model not too sensitive to data, because data point as 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 we all know, we have data points uh, that are typically noisy. Data are random, okay? If if uh, if your model, if your parameter is too sensitive to the data, it means that it's less uh, robust. So um, next, that's why we uh, would like to move further to the soft margin support vector classifier, or SVC. Now you're gonna see um, uh, there's some parameter capital C here. Okay. In this, uh, in this, <coughs> in this approach, we relax something because we would like to. <coughs> to fix about the robustness uh, to the data points. Okay. So we would like to relax this, um, we would like to relax this linear constraint. Initially, we have, we have to enforce the inequality for all i, right? Okay. So what, we, what do we mean by relax? So, uh, initially, everything has to be greater than one. When we say relax, it doesn't have to exceed one. It can exceed just some number that is maybe slightly smaller than one. So what we mean by relax is that we subtract that threshold one by some number zi, and that zi are non-negative. That's what we mean by relax. Okay. Uh, let's take a look um, at the that at at the figure here. Okay. So suppose uh, we have blue class and the red uh, uh, the red class. Okay, and the data points uh, have the corresponding color. Okay. When um, when you have some data point that cannot satisfy the original constraint, all right? Okay. So what we mean that by the red class is that the red class has to has to obey this inequality, and the blue class has to satisfy the blue inequality. Right, <clears throat> so if we take a look at the red class, uh, the red points, what is this red point? It's on the wrong side of this uh, hyperplane, right? It's in the wrong side. This one is on the wrong side as well. What about the blue one? The blue one here, there are the blue one, the blue circle, right? the blue circle here, they are on the other side of, of, of this uh, hyperplane. 
So those are the data samples that cannot satisfy the original inequality. And, but once you relax it, it is satisfied. But the margin, uh, I mean, the way that it's satisfied, you have to relax it by the slack variable zi. So, so the, the height or the distance from this data point to the, to the, uh, to the hyperplane in this way is the value of zi. Which means once you solve it, okay, let, let me just talk to, uh, to the objective function as well. Okay. <clears throat> so suppose, uh, suppose, suppose you have uh, the feasibility or the feasible condition that, uh, that turns out that it's satisfied for, for some i, okay, let's see, let's z1, z2 are non-negative, all right, and z3 and z4 are exactly zero. Once, uh, this is, this is when you, if you solve feasibility problem and it turns out that the solution are in this way, it basically explains that the first and the second sample, all right, will be on the wrong side of the hyperplane. Either, either this one or this one, okay? If it turns out that uh, the sample three and the sample four corresponding to z equals zero, it, mean, it means that those two samples already satisfy the original inequality. So the data sample three and four are on the correct side of the hyperplane, of the half space, okay? Once you relax it, of course, now you you wanna you wanna play with this uh, with this uh, <clears throat> you wanna play with this. Suppose um, suppose uh, suppose uh, suppose I choose the um, the hyperplane this way. I have a lot of uh, I had a lot of data points that that what? Okay, suppose uh, suppose I pick this hyperplane. All right, so I have. Um, Okay, hold on. Mm. Mm. For if I pick this right, I have bunch of a uh, bunch of red that are on the wrong side, and I have uh, some blue point here that are on the wrong side. Okay. When I pick this uh, hyperplane, I have a certain value of the margin. Okay. If I pick another one, if I pick another one. If I pick another one, there's going to be a certain values of data point that are on the wrong side and also a certain value of the margin. So when I have these two objectives in mind, I can pose this problem as, as, the, um, as the optimization problem where I have these two objectives. Mm. So the first one still have a meaning of... Uh, having the maximized margin. You minimize the two norm of W. This is how you maximize the margin of the two. Now let's take a look of, uh, of uh, <coughs> take a look of this term. You have one transpose Z, Z. This is basically the sum of Zi, okay? The role of Zi here is a relaxed variable in as a constraint, right? But once you, once you introduce the objective as a sum of zi, which means you want to minimize the value of the zi as possible. And this uh, is the sum of i to n, right? So for, for some i, for some data index i, that, that can be satisfied by a threshold of one is already okay, right? So the optimal zi of those points should be zero. But if only, if uh if if something if some data point that okay is unavoidable that you have to that you have to relax it so it's gonna be satisfied this by some uh positive number of zi okay now now this is the role of the parameter c between this uh, objective and this objective between the margin and the number of the and the number of the wrong sides uh, of of its class will be a trade off via the parameter c. Um, okay, when you have 
when you have the minimization of um, let's say um, uh, f1 and and f2 right f1 and uh, f2 let's say that your variable is, is theta typically c control the weight of how you minimize of the sum of the two term if c is large it means that you penalize more on f2 if you penalize more on f2 your 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 function f2 after you minimize it will be relatively small okay and your f1 will be relatively large when when i say relatively i i mean that it's in relative to uh to the other case which is when when c is small okay so when when we apply that concept to um to this what what happened um when c is large which means you care more about 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 what about the sum of ci you want sum of ci to be small if c is large so the the data that are on the wrong side of it, its class will be small will be small and the two norm of w will be bigger when the two norm of w is bigger what happened to the margin the margin will be narrow right that is the effect of c uh, when 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 you have multi objective and you consider the trade off between these two guys one one uh, one thing that you have to um keep in mind is that c has to be uh, positive all right <coughs> okay so this is called regularization or penalty parameter c and people call this framework as c as we see is a trade off between maximized margin or the total distance of points on the wrong side so this is the <coughs> the sum of zi if you look take a look at this as a uh, uh, optimization problem uh, this is uh, still a con uh, sorry this is still a quadratic program now uh, keep in mind that uh, now you have introduced another variable z so you have w b and z three variables okay if you take a look at the constraint all of them are linear in w and b and in z so these are linear constraints when you take a look at the cost objective quadratic in w but linear in z so uh, we we say that or oh, is uh, is still um, um, quadratic in the variable so the result is still a convex uh, quadratic program um, in order to solve this okay uh, everything else is problem parameter i mean w b and z are optimization variable so everything else uh, which are w uh, y x and c these are problem parameter you have to specify okay now let's see as i said earlier the effect of c c parameter c okay so this graph if, if you don't look at the caption or the text if you understand the concept previously can you tell how can we vary c from the left to the right figure how does the c parameter c vary <coughs> okay ah. on the left figure <coughs> as you can see that uh, on the right figure uh, let's see on the right figure the margin seem to be smaller right seem to be smaller and on the left hand side the margin seems to be big okay okay it just turns out that okay c is small in the left and c is large on the right hand side <coughs> ah, remember again when c is small okay i'm gonna take the note again you minimize the norm square of w plus c one transpose z okay <coughs> so when when c c is small when c is small you care less you penalize less on the sum of zi right 
you care less, you penalize less on the sum of z i. So one transpose z, uh, one transpose c z is going to be bigger. There will be more data points that are on the wrong side of its class of its class. For example, for example, these are these are points that are on the wrong side of its class. All the purples here, these are all the data points uh, that are on the wrong side of its class because they are supposed to be on, on this area. Okay. When one transpose z is bigger, the norm w is going to be smaller, okay, which means the margin is going to be bigger. Okay. So uh, as you see the effect, when c is larger, the margin is less, right? And there will be less data point, right? Less data point that are on the wrong side of its class. Its class is supposed to be here. When c is bigger, only two points are on the wrong side. Only one point are on the wrong side. As we understand the effect of C on your linear classifier, the, the, the soft margin classifier, how can we choose an appropriate value of C? Uh -huh. uh, typically choosing via cross-validation. Uh, cross okay, because uh, it, it also go back to the concept of bias and uh, variant decomposition again, okay? When, um, when C is large, right, when C is large, um, your classifier team seems to be care more a lot more to the data point, right? So it's highly fit to the data. So it's low bias. It's low bias. And it's gonna have higher variance, which means if you apply this linear classifier to a new to new uh data set, it it uh it is likely that uh it's gonna generate uh totally different outcomes from the data set that you use for training. <coughs> Okay, so in the last part of this video, video clip, um, um, uh, I would like to uh, explain what do we do after we get the classifier, which means, uh, um, <coughs> so when we solve, uh, when we train, so I should use the word train, all right? You have data points, this is uh, training data, you specify C or you already choose it from the cross validation st step. You train it, you will get W hat and B hat. This is the, the train estimated uh, support vector classifier. Now you have new data sets, mm, train, right? You have train, you have validation data set. This is how you uh, tune, tune all choose uh, parameter C. And now you have the test, uh, the test set. From W hat and B hat, how can how can I um, predict the outcome? Okay, so which mean uh, if I if I uh, explain it with this, suppose the suppose the gr suppose the black the black line is the train uh, as we see. I have I have I have new data point. All right, I have new data point. The black oh, sorry maybe the black dot over here. I don't know yet. Uh, its label is going to be right, but can you give it? Can you give the outcome? So what what I would do is that I just plug in that uh, the value of x, all right, to the <coughs> to the linear classifier, and then um, if it's greater than zero, I predict the outcome that it would belong to the class one, and and uh, vice versa. I predict that it's negative one if it's less than zero. So this is a sign function. This is a step predict. Now the so I will uh, end the video here, but I'm gonna leave the idea that in the next video clip we will explain in detail how to get W hat and B hat, the estimated parameter, in detail. And it's gonna be a nice observation that it turns out that W in order to calculate B hat and B hat and W hat, you only use some of the training observations not all of them and the result will be clear by using the KKT or the um, deriving dual problem or of the SVC.